This series was funded by great viewers just like you over on Patreon. Check out the description or end of the video to hear how you can take part in making the show even more amazing. Hey everyone, Kaijin Kumba here, and welcome back to another episode of Witch Ninja, a series that looks at media's most popular shinobi to see which are good and which are bad. And for today's topic, oh man, it was a close call. For the entirety of June, the Patreon votes were neck and neck between Scorpion and Sheik, and yes, Tenno was on there as well, but in the end, it was Nintendo's greatest shinobi that won out. Ah, uh, you'd call her that, but is she really? I mean, just to play devil's advocate here, Sheik isn't exactly keeping a low profile. A white mask and white arm wraps? That ain't gonna hide you from much. True, but see, that's the interesting thing about Sheik slash Zelda. Without knowing a whole bunch about historical ninja, you'd think her design would actually hamper her ability to stay hidden and reclusive, right? But it's actually quite the contrary in the game world of Hyrule. For example? For example, how about the entire concept of the character? In Ocarina of Time, Zelda went to hiding after Ganondorf took over Hyrule under the guise of the male Sheik, hiding her identity behind an ancient order of warriors that protected her family for generations, but also hiding her biological gender. Besides hiding her face and hair under wraps, you can actually see her chest bindings in older depictions of Sheik, alluding to the idea that she actually bound her chest to prevent her figure from giving herself away. Even within their Japanese dialogue, Sheik refers to themselves in-game as Boku, a masculine pronoun for oneself in Japanese. This is an example of Danto no Jutsu, a technique under the Jinto Jipo category of Tonso Jutsu, or Arts of Escape. Similar to the Chi Ton Jipo, where ninjas use earthly elements to hide, and the Ten Ton Jipo, which uses natural phenomena like weather, Jin Ton Jipo techniques utilize living creatures, including people, to hide under just the right circumstances. In the case of the Danto no Jutsu, the technique involves the ninja hiding within a large group of men, from labor sites to drunken parties, or just dressing as an everyday guy to hide in the crowds, which in a sense is what Zelda does in the guise of Sheik. She knew Ganondorf wouldn't rest until he hunted her down, so she hid not only behind a mask, but also a biological gender in order to shift Ganondorf's attention away from her. It didn't really matter if she wore all dark blue or part dark blue or even all white, the concealment Zelda utilized in order to hide herself away was not one of a color, but one of a physical identity, a technique that true ninja were fully capable of and executed. And that ain't the only one. Despite seeing Sheik in only cutscenes in this game, she exhibits even more traditional ninja traits, like her nearly all midnight blue attire. I mean, yeah, the white could definitely get in the way for sure, but Sheik is about 75% dark blue. And as we always say, real ninja wear blue. Due to the simple fact that black contrasts against the night sky while blue melds with it. But it's not just clothes that make the ninja in Sheik's case, we see them constantly utilizing true life ninja techniques in game like the Tanuki Gakure no Jutsu. Named after the Tanuki, one of the only canids able to climb trees, the Tanuki Gakure no Jutsu follows its namesake by focusing on the simple advantage of height when dealing with people. Humans typically don't look up more than at a 45 degree angle, which makes for a great hiding spot for most ninja. And Sheik is no exception, utilizing height to hide from Leak not once, but several times throughout the game. Then you got the one item in Hyrule that any real life ninja would have given an arm and a leg for, Deku Nuts. In game, these clamshell nuts will stun enemies for a few seconds on impact, perfect for escaping or getting a free hit. But Link wasn't the only one to use them. Not only Sheik, but also Impa used these shells as a quick escape from Link, which makes you wonder how Link hasn't gone blind after getting flashbanged a dozen times. <coughs> but regardless, this is yet another simple connection to real life ninja in the form of their Metsubushi, or literally eye closer bombs, a nasty mix of dirt, pepper, sand, and iron powder funneled into dry eggshells and sealed with paper. And yes, they were as difficult to make as it sounds, usually requiring days of preparation to make. Grinding powder, carefully hollowing out eggshells without breaking them, but these little bombs were invaluable for blinding and distracting enemies so a ninja could make the killer escape. Or you could just live in Hyrule where Metsubushi bombs literally grow on trees. But Ocarina of Time isn't the only game where we see fundamental ninja traits with Sheik. Super Smash Bros. of all things actually defines her shinobi relations even more. Her neutral B, the Needle Storm, is far too reminiscent of Bow Shuriken. Long needle-like dart shinobi would use either as a stabbing or a throwing weapon, which was easily tucked into the Tekko for easy grabbing, exactly how Sheik is able to slip out multiple needles to attack with. Her side B also holds a few ninja references. First, Brawl and Melee's Chain, arguably the cheapest and most disrespectful edge guard tool in Sheik's repertoire but in all fairness is something that historical ninja utilized in the form of the Maniki Kusari, a simple double-weighted chain and occasionally rope used to either strike an enemy at range or bind them in order to escape or finish off the ninja's opponent. 
just as cheap yet effective in real life as it is in game. Then there's Sheik's side B burst grenade, and I think it goes without saying that Shinobi absolutely loved explosions. Horokuhiya bombs, Okunia arrows, Hyakuraiju and Bakuchiku firecrackers. I'd argue that ninja and explosives were far more synonymous with each other than ninja and blades. Next, while Sheik's down B, the bouncing fish is a sweet kickflip attack that feels very ninja aesthetically, it's actually a move from Nanchun, or Southern Fist Kung Fu style from China. But Sheik's up B vanish is something we gotta talk about, because while not historically accurate, it's definitely important to ninja culture. Sheik's vanish has her dropping explosive and seemingly teleporting about 8 feet into the air and then free falling. This technique is known as a Shushin no Jutsu, or Blink of the Eye technique. A visual trick that has the enemy thinking that the ninja actually teleported a short distance away. Now, I know a lot of you may have heard about this jutsu through Naruto, but this technique was already made into a ninja classic trope as early as 1966 in the movie Watari Ninja Boy. A story about a boy naturally gifted in the ninja arts who leads a revolt against the evil leaders of the Iga. And even just within the trailer alone, we see Watari pulling off this jutsu half a dozen times. But hey, just because it's not documented doesn't mean it's not possible. Alright, I mean, sure, no one has the ability to teleport, but a well-placed explosion of sound and smoke combined with quick movement could make an unaware enemy think the ninja was able to move a great distance. Besides, she drops a bomb on the ground and then moves, so who's to say she's not utilizing the same technique real ninja did so long ago? Well, true. In fact, we see her using the same technique again in Hyrule Warriors during her outro. A few strums of her harp and then BAM! Torinoko smoke bomb and she's gone. And that's not the only legit ninja thing we see her use in Hyrule Wars. Get a load of this! She's actually using kunai correctly! Right? I will never in my life understand how something like this could be aerodynamic enough to be thrown straight. Bullshriken? Sure. But kunai? These were primarily digging tools used to get under fences or cut through walls, and yes, made for a superb melee weapon given their sharpened edges and small size. And thankfully, in the majority of her attacks, Sheik dual wields her kunai with great efficiency. Wait, what about her core combo that has her throwing her kunai? Well, to be fair, it's not like it was impossible to do some damage throwing these things. I mean, you can throw a dagger, essentially what these things are, and hit your mark, but it's far less effective at range than it would be as a melee weapon. An all-edged weapon like a shuriken would be a far better choice, and true to form, Sheik uses her kunai more for melee than for range. But what about her combos? At different points in her chain combo, dropping a heavy attack will initiate a different elemental attack based on what Ocarina of Time song she plays. Serenade of Water, Bolero of Fire, Song of Storms, Nocturne of Shadow, and so on. Seems pretty unique to this game. Well, here's the thing. Remember at the very beginning of the video when I talked about the Jin Tonjipo, Chi Tonjipo, and Ten Tonjipo? Technically speaking, all of these combo enters could fall under the categories of these three families of jutsus. Just as Sheik utilizes different elements in her harp, so too did Ninja utilize elements to their advantage. Now, most of Sheik's abilities fall under the Chiton Jipo, which utilize the Goton, or the five core elements of fire, water, earth, wood, and metal. The Serenade of Water, which protects Sheik with a water shield, is not so unlike the Suito no Jutsu that has the ninja hiding in a body of water to protect themselves from enemies. How about the Bolero Fire's Rune Explosion? Well, very similar to a ninja's use of a Kato no Jutsu, like an explosive Umebi Mine. And if you want to get even more technical, Sheik's kunai could be classified as a kinto no jutsu, or technique that takes advantage of metallic tools. And the spirit-focused finisher, Saria's Song, which summons half a dozen trees, could easily fall under a mokoto no jutsu, shinobi techniques that involve trees. All five elements covered. Well, what about the Song of Storms, Nocturne of Shadow, and Prelude of Light? Those fall under the Tendon Jipo, loosely meaning techniques of the heavens, but more specifically the use of weather. The Song of Storms, for example, could be boiled down into both a Denton and Daiton no Jutsu. The Denton no Jutsu as a technique was the utilization of static electricity to shock and distract enemies, while the Daiton no Jutsu utilized the loud and surprising crashes of thunder which startled guards and allowed the ninja to move in conjunction with a thunderclap. And both of these two we see in the Song of Storms' ability, not only to jolt and disorient Sheik's enemies, but also move past them. The Nocturne of Shadow, on the other hand, could be a shadow to techniques like the Geto no Jutsu, or Moon Technique, wherein a ninja would make their move as soon as the moon was blocked by the clouds and darkness would mask their movement. And on the flip side, the Prelude of Light might also be a shadow to another Tenton Shippo art, the Hito no Jutsu, or Sun Technique. A pretty simple trick where the ninja would have the sun at their back to blind their enemies as they made their escape. Interesting if true, but I'd honestly be surprised if these combo finishers really were inspired by ninja techniques. Well, I would too, but remember that half the power ninja had over people wasn't what they could do, but what the people believed they could do. Manipulating the elements, teleportation, turning invisible, things like that. Sure, it was all superstition and rumors, but every rumor has a root of truth to it. 
Just like how Sheik may be one of the strangest ninjas in gaming with their white clothes and weird bending of the elements, but within them are more than a few truths to the true nature and history of the ninja. How they fought, how they hid, and how they used the elements around them to get the upper hand. But thanks for watching everyone, and a special thank you to all my patrons for supporting this show. Cause without you guys, which ninja would just be a word document sitting on my computer? And if you want to help support the show and get some behind the scenes rewards as well as vote on future topics, be sure to check us out on Patreon. It's our hope that in time we can finally do away with the problem of ads and the adpocalypse on this channel, and with your help, we can make it happen. Otherwise, I hope to see you guys next time. But if you can't wait that long, don't forget, Aki and I stream every Tuesday, Saturday, and Sunday at twitch.tv forward slash gaijinkoomba at 7pm US Central Time. We've been playing a ton of Fallout 4, Mario Tennis Aces, and even some Warframe for our Shinobi Sundays, so come swing by and say hi! But until next time everyone, this is Gaijin Goomba, signing out.